Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, hi. Hello. Um, uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> welcome to another episode of um, webinars. Yes, that's, that's what, what we're, we're doing. doing. Webinars. Yeah, webinars. May the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you. Yes, Today so. is Star Wars Day for those of you who are Star Wars fans. And for um, those of you who are not, it's still Star Wars Day. That's right. You know, it's just good to get your lightsaber training in. Right. 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 Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So today we're going to talk more about the Animal Kingdom. Yes. I love this book. This is um, this is one of my favorite Heron books. Uh, I don't know if this is available for download, but this is available at a 30% discount from HeronBooks.com if you want to. End of commercial. Okay. There, we're going, there's the cover of it. That's Gorgeous book. So today, I've talked about uh, some other parts of this book before. So today, I thought we should talk about reptiles, because reptiles are always interesting. I think they are. And in researching for this talk that I'm going to do, this webinar, I found some fascinating things that I never knew about reptiles. And this is something you could do also if you're interested in reptiles if you're if you're interested in animals, you know this is might be a subject that you would want to find more uh, more about. So that maybe if you really like animals and you want to be a veterinarian or a, a, I don't know a zoo work in a zoo or something like that, you this is a career if you really love animals. Anyway, the word reptile is from Latin and it means crawling which makes really? sense. Yeah. Isn't I, that interesting? I actually didn't know that. You didn't know that. <laughs> no. And, and it means crawling because reptiles crawl. Uh, they're cold blooded, which means we went over this before, but it means they don't create body heat themselves like you and I do. They depend on the weather. When the weather's colder, they're not so active. When the weather's warmer, they're more active. Or if it's cold, you might see them like a snake lying on a rock or a turtle lying on a rock to warm up. They're vertebrates, which means they have backbones. And the main categories of reptiles are turtles, lizards, snakes, and crocodiles and alligators. Ooh. And in with crocodiles and alligators are dinosaurs. Yay. And even though dinosaurs don't exist anymore, they're extinct. And even though they're extinct, they're still considered part of the reptile species. So you don't have to have an animal that's still alive to be part of the, the reptile species. Um, so there with, even though, and birds, you might've heard birds are related to dinosaurs. Well, birds aren't reptiles. So the reptiles have their own, own special category. And even though dinosaur means uh, uh, thunder lizard, I think, or great lizard, something yeah. like that, they're not considered lizards. They're part of the crocodile and alligator family. Anyway, we're going to jump right in to one of my favorites. What's his name? Uh, I called him Harold. Uh, that, that just the, he asked me what his name was, and I thought Harold. But if if you guys have a better idea for a name, um, definitely put it in the Q and A section. Yeah. And a belated welcome to all of you. I'm glad you could join us today. And of course, I'm Marty, and this is James, my co-conspirator, and we're here to have fun <laughs> and, and uh, have fun and communicate with you. And if you would like to communicate with us, there's a Q&A box, and James will be happy to interrupt every now and then. Like uh, right now. Okay, we've got some great, all right, so, some people like Harold, Frederick, Alex, Shelly, that's good. Shelly, I get it. Lucas. And uh, Darth <laughs> Darth Turtle. I think okay. I I think that's what we need to do. Thank you, Cypress, for for that suggestion. Darth Turtle. Darth Turtle, whose real name is Shelley, but after Shelley converted to the dark side, he became Darth Turtle. Okay, I, okay good. Mr. Sheldon, Shelley Sheldon, A.K.A. Darth Turtle. All right. Good. Thanks for that. Okay. So. Um, James, would you bring up a picture of the leatherback turtle? This is a leatherback sea turtle. Wow, look at that guy. And it's the largest sea turtle, the largest turtle there is. And it can weigh up to a thousand 
2,000 pounds. That's but a ton. That's a ton. So uh, they're big. They're big guys. Wow. Now, here's something that was really fascinating that I learned about turtles that I recall hearing maybe in the past, but I had forgotten. When turtles lay eggs, uh, there's a picture home somewhere of turtles. And that's not a turtle. There we, there, we, yeah, there we go. There we go. So that's been cut away so you can see the, the number of eggs uh, that they lay. They lay quite a number. They can lay a hundred, hundreds of legs, eggs at one time wow. and thousands in a lifetime. So you think you have a big family. Thousands. I got cousins, but not like that. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, what happens is um, the temperature of the eggs while they're in there doing their thing and getting ready to hatch determines whether they're going to be male or female. Huh. Isn't that fascinating? If the temperature is above 88 degrees Fahrenheit, they're all girls. If the temperature is below... 82 degrees Fahrenheit, they're all boys. If the temperature's in between, you got boys and girls. I thought that was fascinating. That is fascinating. So it's the temperature that determines whether they're boy and girl or it whether they're boy and girl determines the temperature of the egg on the outside. No, it's a temperature that determines whether they're male wow. or female. Wow. So in a hot, hot, hot day or hot, hot, hot summer when they're hatching, you might have a whole bunch of females. And on a cooler type of day or cooler season, it would be all males. That's and in between, it's in between. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. It is. Now, here's the other thing. There are some turtles, like the sea turtle we just saw, uh, that lives in salt water all its life. So where does it get fresh water to drink? Hmm. Does it like swim into a lake or something? No. It does something equally fascinating that I didn't know before. I know. It, um, it, can, it has a special gland or part of its body which helps remove the salt from salt water so it can drink. That's cool. I wish I had that. I wish I had that. Now there's another picture. Let's go back to this other picture. Here's something that turtles have in common with swordfish, with sharks, and with penguins. And that is they can eat jellyfish and not get stung. Mm. They like spicy food. <laughs> they like spicy food. <laughs> they like spicy food. So that's something, you know. Because if I touch a jellyfish, I get stung. Oh, yeah. I yeah. touched one once. And it it. It stings. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, and even sometimes they were dried up on the beach, and I said, oh, look, I wonder what, you know, I stepped on it, and I, whoa, and that really hurt. So this, uh, these uh, jellyfish are a problem in some places where there's so many jellyfish, and people can't go fishing because they'll you know, go in the water, and it'll get on their hands, and it'll burn. Um, so this is something that people could do, have more sea turtles, because sea turtles munch on jellyfish. Yay, sea turtles. Yeah. I wonder if they munch on peanut butter fish, too. Anyway, <laughs> we'll just let that one lie. Um, so if you'll notice, you can see in this picture, turtles don't have ears. Well, they actually do, but it's covered with a thin piece of skin. So even though they can hear with their ears, they don't have outside ears like we do. They sort of have inside ears. And uh, turtles like this can live between 30 and 40 years. Um, and land turtles could live 80 or more years. Some of wow. them can live to 100 years. These big tortoises you might have seen, yeah. they can live to over 100 years. Uh, to up to over 100 years. That's incredible. It is. That's, a, that's like as long or longer than people live. Yeah. And just like people, they eat vegetables and, and uh, animals. They're sort of the, um, the lawnmower of the sea. It's and, so poetic. <laughs> <laughs> and here's something else that I found. Now, how long can you hold your breath underwater? 
I could hold my breath underwater for maybe a minute, maybe a minute. I know whales can hold their breath underwater. They, they breathe air. So they need to come up, get some fresh air, and then they can go down. They can go down for quite some time. Sea turtles can hold their breath underwater for five hours. Five hours. I mean, that's incredible. And there's, an, there's a really interesting way they do that, which I'll tell you in a minute. Sea turtles have about 60 bones. Look at that. Isn't that a great? That's baby sea turtles heading out to sea. Um, sea turtles have about 60 bones in their body. Compared to you, you have 206. That's a lot more. And you know, these sea turtles have been around for millions and millions and millions of years. About over 200 million years ago, sea turtles were around. <sighs> and when they were around, hey, that was pretty <laughs> That was a little over a minute. Well done. I can't do five hours, can't though. Can't do five hours. I'm Practice. sitting here like, I need air. And you're saying that whales can go down for, you can go down you for, know, a, for a long, long time. time and yeah. Sea turtles can go down for five hours. Yeah. I'll stay up here where the air is. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so I was mistaken. It's not 210 years. It's 110 million years. That's how long these sea turtles have been around. So they were around when T-Rex and all the other dinosaurs were roaming around the earth. These guys were still there. Good job, guys. Yeah, and these guys are still here now, and T-Rex is gone. gone. Now, we could talk about that, but that's some other day. Here's something else I found. Like, have you ever gone for a walk or gone into the ocean and, you know, for a swim and you come out and you, you're looking for where your blanket is and where your mom and dad are? Oh, yeah, yeah, there they are. There they are. And But, like, you, you kind of, you didn't know where they were. Mm -hmm. Or you've been lost for, them for a Yeah, you've been for a walk and you all of a sudden you're a little, hmm, I'm not sure exactly where I am. So how do they, so these sea turtles, as you saw in that picture, the two pictures, were born on a beach. Mom comes in on the beach and lays a bunch of eggs like this. And then the, some time later, the sea turtles are born and they swim back into the ocean. They know where the ocean is. They know which way to go. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was first born, I didn't know nothing. I didn't know where the ocean was. I didn't know where the yeah. ocean was. These guys know where the ocean is and they know they need to get there. And so that's what they do. But also, they know. They could be in out on the ocean and then they know, oh, it's time. It's time to lay some eggs. And they come back to the same beach. The exact same beach. How do they know that? Hmm. Scientists have found out <clears throat> that they can sense the magnetic field of the earth. Wow. And the way they do that is in the fluid inside their brain, their fluid is like a liquid or a gas. In this case, it's a liquid. In the liquidy part around their brain are crystals, little magnetic crystals that help them sense the earth's magnetic field. Wow. I can't do that. No, I can't do that right now. Wouldn't it be cool if we had that? Wouldn't it be cool if we could sense the magnetic field of Earth? Because then maybe you could also sense other magnetic fields. Yeah. And then maybe it'd be easier to find your phone when you lost it, if your phone had any kind of magnetic field around it. And it does. There you go. Okay. So sea turtles, like the ones you see in the picture here, spend most of their time in the ocean, um, they're relatives of the tortoise, but the tortoise spends all of its life on earth, on the ground. They're land lovers. These guys are water lovers. And um, there's a relative of the sea turtle and the tortoise, and that's called the terrapin. And all right. Terrapin, do we have? Oh, here we go. All right. We've got oh, a few sides go. to catch up. Now, too. look at this. Yeah. Yeah. They can slow their heart rate to how many beats does it, can we move that? To heart rate to, 
Uh, let's say I, they I, can I, slow their I heart rate. It. I think I That's said okay. that wrong. <laughs> to nine minutes in between heartbeats. So their heart beats once. It's not beating again for another nine minutes. Ours beat Boom. like Boom. 70 Boom. times a Boom. minute. Boom. They can Boom. slow their heart Boom. rate down so that it beats and it doesn't beat again until nine, nine minutes, minutes later. You know what? I'm going to make a note right now. I'm going to let you know when nine minutes is up. Okay. I want to set a timer for nine minutes so that okay. we all know how long, how long that is. I mean, timer going. That's something that I that I found out that I just said, "Wow, that's incredible." It's incredible, and that's the thing that I love about about finding out about things. You know, you're interested in something, you have the world at your fingertips with Google and and the internet, and you can find out so many things. So, if you want to find out about something you're interested in, this is the time. Go for it. Okay. Anyway, uh, the word there's a tor a tortoise one of these land turtles, and it gives you an idea how big they are. They can get bigger than that still. Uh, and I think we have terrapins also. Yeah, it's these terrapin. guys are terrapins. That, that looks familiar. That looks like something I would see in a pond or a stream. Right, and terrapins uh, are an Indian word, or they come from an Indian word that means little turtle. Oh. And so there are some terrapins. So the turtles that you see in ponds or rivers. They're not sea turtles and they're certainly not tortoises. They're terrapins. So I've had a terrapin as a pet. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sliders, red-eared sliders are pretty common uh, type of terrapin. I'm not sure that that's what these guys are, but anyway, on to more lizards. Oh, we have a question. Uh, what are the natural predators of the sea turtle? Well, I know that when they're young, uh, and scurrying out to the uh, to this across the sand into the water, um, all sorts of birds mm -hmm. come and and feast on them. Seagulls and, and crows. And yeah, yeah, all kinds of seabirds, mm -hmm. puffins, and uh, while they're in the water, uh, while they're young, their their shell can be broken into by uh, by uh, carnivores, uh, sharks, and things like that. Um, and so only a few out of, uh, out of the, all of those, out of a hundred, let's say, only a few survive to adulthood. So because they do have predators, uh, most fish that uh, when they're babies, most fish can eat them. Is that it? Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, we do have a question. Are they poisonous? Sea turtles, no. No, but they have a bite. They do have a bite. So you don't want to get too close to them. Um, same thing with the with the tortoise. They that definitely looks like a strong. Yeah, they have. Jaw. They have. They can do mm -hmm. that. They're not aggressive. They're not going to chase after you if you're in the water, but you don't want to fool around with them. They're a wild animal, yeah. and like any wild animals, they especially when they're older, they have a way to defend themselves. There you go. As a matter of fact. Um, Terry, do you remember Terry? You mm -hmm. remember? Terry told me the story. He, uh, he, he caught this sea turtle and uh, it was a big sea turtle and he brought it, put it in the back of his pickup and I don't know what they were gonna do with it. And so he, he was gonna move it. They had this big stick about yay big and he was gonna move it over to the side and all of a sudden the sea turtle threw out its jaw and, <laughs> and snapped the thing. Oh! So he said, okay, you kids, get away. Anyway, <laughs> so don't, uh, don't fool around with these turtles. They can bite, and even though they're not poisonous, they can do damage. Okay, now we're gonna head on to, whoa, look at, that's where we're headed on. To. Okay, I'm screwed Alligators, up. alligators and crocodiles and dinosaurs. As I mentioned, dinosaurs are in the family of reptiles that have alligators and crocodiles. That looks like a dinosaur. Look at it. It does, like, yeah. it does. It has scales, it has these things, and goes in the water and on land, mm -hmm. both. Um, so this is an alligator. Most alligators in the US are around Florida and South Carolina, and they like the warm water. Um, they can grow really big like this, uh, over 19 feet long. That is big, and That's they big. have, powerful jaw muscles that can close on anything. And crocodiles and alligators are also uh, 
can also eat turtles. So um, that's something to keep in mind. But they have really strong jaw muscles that close, but they have weak muscles to, to open their jaws. Hmm. So you don't want to get an alligator when it's closing down because you can't, you can't stop that from happening. But once its jaw closes, you, you can hold, hold it, it down because it's, it's very weak. It has a very weak muscle for opening its jaw. Interesting. Don't yeah. try that at home. Right. Yeah. Um, and they're not that fast. The average person could outrun an alligator easily. Uh, they don't usually catch people by running them down. They sneak up on people, especially in the water. So if you're in the water in any of those places, just keep be aware of what's around you. Uh, alligators can live for 30 to 50 years, and wow. that's a long time. That's a long time. And they can grow uh, over a thousand pounds. Like this picture you're looking at is an alligator. Look at that face. It's, yeah. And you notice it's kind of a, you could sort of see it's a rounded kind of jaw. We're going to talk about uh, crocodiles. Now, crocodiles look very similar, but they're a lot bigger and they have a narrower kind of a jaw, and uh, they can, they're a lot more dangerous. They can live a lot longer too. They can live as long as a human, 70 to 100 years. Wow, okay. That's crocodiles. And um, I said that this, uh, this alligator could be about, about a thousand pounds maximum. Crocodiles can be about 2,000 pounds. Wow. Twice the size. Wow. And they're, these crocodiles are responsible for a thousand deaths, over a thousand deaths a year throughout the world. So let do we have a crocodile picture here? There's, yeah, a, crocodile. there's a croc. Oh and yeah. Look at how narrow that jaw is. And you can nose, see yeah. all of the teeth. Now this is a, a youngster. This is not an old crocodile. This is a young'un. But look at all those teeth and look at the narrow jaw. That's how to tell the difference between a, a crocodile and an alligator. Um, so these guys are warm water. They prefer warm water. They're in around Australia and they're around uh, uh, the South America and Africa. Uh, and so it's very there. It's very common in these places uh, to see alligator, to see crocodiles like that. Wow. Now let's see what else we have. So. Uh, some dinosaurs ate lizards, turtles. Oh, so dinosaurs are closely related, as I said, to alligators and crocodiles. And uh, dinosaurs ate lizards and plants and turtles and eggs and mammals and other dinosaurs. Uh, let's see. I don't think All I right. have a picture. I think of our dinosaurs. next slide. Yeah, oh, yeah. There we go. This is a giant <laughs> prehistoric crocodile. Now, oh, man. We don't, there, this is a, not a real picture, but this is a picture to give you an idea. If these guys, if these prehistoric crocodiles were still around, gives you an idea how big they would be. Remember, I said a crocodile could be about 2,000 pounds. That's about as large as they get. This guy is eight times bigger and heavier. And you wouldn't want to get involved with this guy. Look at the size of nope. that. And then I think I have another picture of the skeleton. There's the skeleton of Ooh, one of these boy. guys. So that's how scientists know how big these guys were. They would dig them up and they'd find a skeleton. And, oh, look, there's a skeleton. They'd dig them up. And then there's a way they can find out how old they are. Um, that way is, is called uh, a half-life. They can use half-lives and a half-life. There are some, there are some elements, there are some parts of the bone that will change into other elements. And scientists have figured out how long that would take. So they measure how much of that element, that's carbon, is in the alligator and how much of this other kind of element that the car that the carbon broke down into is nine in. minutes. Okay, that heart, that turtle heartbeat. Just just beat beat again. one more time. Okay. Wow. And so they can figure out how old these guys are by.
the amount of the carbon there is in there and this stuff that the carbon turns into. Fascinating that's, stuff. That's amazing. Next, we're going to talk about snakes. Snakes are also part of the uh, reptile kingdom. And uh, like other reptiles, they're cold-blooded, they have backbones, uh, and they have scale-like skins, and they lay eggs. Most snakes lay eggs. Did you know some snakes could live to be 100 years? Really? I had no idea. I don't talk to many snakes, so I didn't, you know. And I, and I usually don't ask their age when I see a snake. I just It's usually run. a good idea. Yeah. Um, so that, but there are some that most of them lay eggs like that. And you can see the heads yeah, coming out from guys. those eggs. But there are some, let's go to the next picture. Look at that. There are some snakes that give live birth. That looks like a rattlesnake. Yeah. See the rattle on it? So rattlesnakes don't lay eggs. They birth their their babies live, like people. Um, also, boas and sea snakes and garter snakes give live birth. I remember I, uh, I bought some, a garter snake online. And uh, it was a Friday, and I got it and put it in its little cage mm -hmm. with a lid on top and put plenty of food and water in there and came back Monday, and I had 10 garter snakes. Oh. I got a pregnant female, and bingo bango, I had a whole family. Wow. Um, so some snakes live in the desert, and some uh, snakes live in the forest, and some snakes live in fresh water and even salt water. Yeah. So I think yeah, I, I, I've, I've been, you know, I, I grew up with this idea that rattlesnakes were mean and dangerous, and you hear that rattle, and you think, oh, no, it's mad. And, but then I realized that rattlesnakes are actually one of the kindest snakes. They're saying, hey, excuse me, I'm here. Don't step on me. I might have to bite you. It's just self-defense. Get away. Nothing personal. Keep I away. I just really don't want you to step on me because you're making, that would hurt. You're, you're making, making me frightened. Yeah. You're frightening me. Look ah. out, look out, look out. Ah. <laughs> so. Okay. Now, there are 35,000. Whoa. 35,000. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when to go to that next slide. Okay. Okay. <laughs> types of, of snakes. 3,500 uh, types 30, of snakes? 3,500, yes. That's, wow. Did I say 1,000? Yeah, 35, either of those numbers are There's big. only 3,500. Oh, that's um, good. <laughs> and uh, they're found everywhere except for five land masses surrounded by water. Can you, uh, can you guess any of these places where there are no snakes? If you think you can, fill in the Q&A box. Do we have any questions or comments in the meantime? Yeah, so a, a couple questions here. Owen asks, what's the largest species of crocodile on earth? It's the saltwater crocodile. Okay. Saltwater crocodile uh, is common to, uh, as I said, to Australia and to uh, Africa and South America. It likes warm water. Um, and so that's the largest. And they are huge and they are mean. Mm. And well, they eat just about anything. I'll keep my distance. Good idea. Yeah. Uh, Isis says, did you know that baby snakes are more dangerous than adult snakes? That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So we, we have some um, guesses here about where there are not snakes. Okay. Let's uh, lay them on me. A bunch of people said what my first guess was, which was Antarctica. Antarctica is correct. Ding, ding, yeah. ding, ding. Bing, bing, bing. It's too cold there, right? Too cold. Okay. Yeah, for me, at least. Uh, Greenland? Greenland is correct. Okay, good. So that's the place I can move. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hawaii. Hawaii has lots of snakes. Okay. Well, I'm not going there. Um, Greenland, good. Ah. The Galapagos Islands? Has snakes. Globkas Islands have snakes. Okay, okay. All right, we have someone guessing the North Pole. The North Pole is not an island by itself. No, the North Pole is actually... It's, ocean. It's ocean, yeah. right. If all the ice melted, uh, there would just be water there. There's no land at the North Pole. Mm -hmm. So it's not an island unless you want to consider it an ice island. Yep. Arya's guessing New York City. I wish that was the case. <laughs> there are snakes on the island of Manhattan where New York City is. I've seen them. One. Once. And some lawyers are snakes, too. But that's a different story. <laughs> the Philippines. The Philippines has tons of snakes. Okay, not going there. 
All right. Western Oregon only has non-poisonous snakes. Woo! So uh, we have a you know garter and this sort of thing, but they're not poisonous snakes in Western Oregon. That's which really is nice. Where we are from. Yep. Um, there's New Zealand. New Zealand is an oh. island. It doesn't have any snakes on it. That's interesting. There's Iceland. Did somebody mention Iceland? Lucas just put Iceland in there. Good job, Lucas. Right under the wire. Okay. And um, Ireland. Oh. Remember the story about uh, St. Patrick uh, chased the snakes out of Ireland? Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's true. Well, anyway. There you go. Uh, of the 3,500 types of snakes there are, only 10% are uh, poisonous. That's good. And so some of them are still killers because you have the constrictors, you know, but um, like the python is a constrictor. It squeezes its victims. But there's the garter snake also, which is just a fun snake to have around and doesn't really bother you unless you're a worm. Um, and there's another interesting picture of, look at that. Woo! Snakes. Here's a python eating an alligator. Now, I, I, I don't know if that is better or worse. <laughs> I mean, they, what they can do is they can unhook their lower jaw and, and that way they could eat something many, many, many times um, larger than, their, than you'd think they could be able to eat. As a matter of fact, I think I have another picture of, okay, this is a snake with a forked tongue. Oh, so really cool. why why does a snake have a forked tongue? And why does it keep throwing its tongue out? You know, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm, guess, I'm guessing it's not because they also have like a spoon tongue and a knife tongue. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. A, AG it's says to means smell. To, to smell, that's right. Good. They can smell and they can also, they can use it in different directions to find out where that smell is coming from. So if they smell a little mouse or something like that, they could find out which way it's coming from by putting out their tongue and and help them find the direction. It's like when we smell something. And we're yeah, like, yeah, right. Where Where is that hamburger that coming direction. from? <laughs> um, or where there's danger, you know, mm. maybe there they can smell smoke from a fire or something. And uh, the interesting thing about snakes is they have other ways to tell them where food is. Um, they have eyes that can sense heat oh. given off by warm-blooded critters like mice and rats and things like, and humans. And so I have a phone that has a UV camera, you know, and so it can, it can uh, actually it's an infrared camera. Infrared camera, infrared means heat. That's all infrared means. So it's a fancy word for heat. So you can have an infrared camera that'll take pictures of things and you'll be able to see, oh, look, that area is hot and that area is cooler. And so snakes have that same ability to, uh, to figure out what is hot because where it's hot is usually food. I think I have a picture of, oh, there's a picture of a snake shedding its skin. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine once a month you just say, well, I'm tired of the skin. I got some, uh, I got some little critters growing on it. Well, snakes do anyway. And so they rub up against a branch or something like that. And then they come right out of their skin. And they're, they're, uh, that was another, another nine minutes. That was another nine minutes. <laughs> that sea turtle's heart just beat once just more. Beat once more. Wow. Okay. That's I, I've turned off the timer. It won't go off again. I just wanted to let that go a couple of times just to get an idea. That's so incredible. That's so unbelievable. Our hearts beat hundreds of times in that same time span. Yeah, nine, a hundred of them, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, so these snakes can shed their skin and when they do, some snakes are, uh, are more vulnerable, they're more liable to be eaten by other animal birds or something because the, the scales under their skin are not that hard mm. for a short period of time. Anyway. Um, next is legless lizard, that's the next ah, slide. Yes. And so snakes can eat animals. We talked about their jaw on hooking. Yeah, that'd be really useful in the next day. Often when I eat like a cheeseburger, 
<laughs> I put a lot of stuff on there and it's too big and I, I, I how about I, a double cheeseburger exactly you'd really need to unhook your jaws for that yes or a double veggie burger if that's your idea of a good time yep good. okay so what's our next slide are we going into lizards yet all right well oh look legless this lizards. is a legless lizard so legless lizards uh look like snakes don't they sure does but they don't have a forked tongue mm. um, and they have eyelids so snakes don't have eyelids so you'll never catch a snake blinking but these guys <laughs> that explains why i lost all the staring contests yes yeah so these guys are uh do have eyelids and so scientists decided instead of keeping them with snakes because they have no legs or sometimes i've seen these they're called legless lizards, but they have, you know, like little itty bitty legs that can't do them any good at all. Uh, it's sort of like the hands of a T-Rex, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't really, it's there just for show. Um, anyway. Um, Owen asks, what's the largest prehistoric species of snake? That's a great question. I don't know that. I would have to guess. I, I would venture a guess that the largest prehistoric is still with us mm. and that it's the giant uh, anaconda, mm. which is uh, in Amazon and it's in the Everglades. Um, and they're not poisonous, but they're constrictors. And uh, yeah, we, we saw the one eating the, uh, the alligator. Yeah. That was a big snake. That's pretty huge. That was a, uh, an anaconda or a, uh, um, a what? Boa constrictor. Boa constrictor. Yeah. Boa. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, we got legless lizards. Now we got flying lizards. Yes. They fly now? Well, not now because of the coronavirus. Okay. But uh, once the, the, the uh, well, isolation has been lifted, they'll good. be able to fly. No, these, they really <laughs> can't fly, but they have these, the skin. I have loose skin too, but that's another story. They have skin that they can sort of use and glide through the air like that. So this is the picture on the left is what it looks like uh, before they're, uh, when they're just hanging around on a leaf or whatever. And then the guy on the right is, um, you're, you're being shown how it's that- extended, can, yeah. It, can fold out. And I've seen pictures on the internet of these guys like gliding from one tree to the other. Yeah. Sort of like a I've flying seen, squirrel. Yeah. I, I've seen videos of that. It looks really cool. Yeah. And then do you know, is there is there a muscle there that it uses to extend those or does its hand like grab the wing? I don't know. And bring it I forward? have no idea. It's really interesting. Yeah. Well, something for you guys to, to research when we're done here. Research and let me know. I'll be looking. Do we have, oh, do you, any of you have any um, reptiles as pets. Now, don't tell me you have a crocodile, an Amazon crocodile as a pet, but- If you do have one, don't tell us. <laughs> send it in, uh, send in the q and I'd like to hear what kind of reptile pets you have had or you have seen. Okay. Milo's helping us out here with the name of that largest prehistoric snake. He yes. and a couple of, uh, of others have given us the name Titanoboa. I like it. That sounds like a huge boa. Huge kind of snake. Titanoboa. That is a really good name. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. So lizards, like this guy, can eat plants and animals and insects and uh, stuff like that. Now, this is the largest living lizard. And it's the Komodo dragon. That looks, except for the whole breathing fire and wings yeah. thing, it looks like a dragon. It looks like a dragon. It looks like a dinosaur, too. It does. And you can see how dinosaurs fit into this, this reptile category, even though they're not lizards, but they look a lot like uh, dinosaurs, at least the pictures we've seen, look a lot like the uh, alligator and crocodile. Um, I've actually seen some pictures, scientists don't know for sure, but they think that some dinosaurs had feathers on them instead of scales. Anyway, yeah. Um, 
We, you, we were talking about that in a webinar I did a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. where they did find uh, a piece of amber, hardened tree sap from millions of years ago. This particular one was from about 130 million years ago. And the sap had trapped part of a dinosaur tail. And they were able to tell that they knew the species of dinosaur. And there were definitely feathers trapped in there. And the amber hardens and preserves it. Yep. It perfectly captures it. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Anyway, these are Komodo dragons. They are not from around here. They are yeah, from I, Indo... I, I haven't seen these outside in Oregon. <laughs> Except maybe the zoo. I don't even know if the zoo would have something like that. But um, they are very large. They can grow to 10 feet tall, 10 feet long, not tall, 10 feet long. And they weigh about, a, can weigh 150 pounds and they have a poisonous bite. Um, now they might've just fed this one or this one might've just eaten because they can run pretty fast. I'm like, what are you doing there, lady? Get yeah. out of there. Yeah. Get out, run. Um, <laughs> unless maybe they, they sedated this one. Or oh, I've seen okay. other pictures, I don't know. But um, maybe she's a veterinarian and she's there to take care of it and they sedate it. They, they kind of give it a thing to put it to sleep for a bit. So they yeah. come in and check on it check and make, its sure weight, it's make sure it's healthy. Yeah, exactly. yeah, okay, okay, that makes sense. Um, but maybe not. Maybe she's just a daredevil. <laughs> so anyway, uh, these are Komodo dragons. They're from Indonesia, which is like between China and Australia. That's that lots and lots of islands. Um, they eat just about anything they can catch, any kind of animal. Uh, and they can catch lots of animals. Uh, they feed on smaller lizards or water buffalo. What? They water can buffalo eat, are huge. They can snack on water buffalo. Wow. When you're, anything they can catch, they will eat. Okay, well, what, uh, what, do we have any people telling us of any um, reptiles that they have for pets? Oh, right, any pets. Uh, we have people, let's see, uh, Aaron has a leopard gecko. Wow. That's cool. Lucas has a snake. What kind of snake, Lucas? April says that her dog is watching us. That's cool. <laughs> see, we appeal to the whole animal kingdom. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. All right, uh, Liam has a chameleon. Chameleons That's are cool, cool because they can change their colors. They can, they can look different in different, uh, if they're uh, worried or upset or the background's different, they can change the way they look. So if we had a chameleon here and it changed to match our green screen, it would- You couldn't see, see you it. You guys appear to just disappear from our hand. That's cool. Right. Isis has a friend who has a turtle. Mm. Tom has a bearded dragon. Wow, that's some, some great snakes. All right. Well, that, that is fascinating. Now, a, a lot of this, uh, if you want more, here, I'm going to switch over here real quick. If you want to learn more about animals, different animals in the animal kingdom, there's this great book from heronbooks.com. It's called The Animal Kingdom. And we just talked about reptiles today. Just one tiny part of it. So this book goes over, let's see. Um, reptiles and amphibians and yeah, birds. A spot in here. And there's a cool elephants. looking lizard. Yeah. yeah. Here we are in the amphibian section of the book. Oh, and look, you could see the eggs that the- uh, amphibian eggs. Yeah, that the frog lays. And the frog lays their eggs in the water and then it becomes a, uh, a little, like a little frog with little feet and a tail, but then it loses the tail as it, uh, as it gets a little older. Hatchlings. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Griffin has a blue-bellied lizard. That wow. sounds cool. Wow. Um, and AG, I think you're right on the spelling of Komodo dragon. I think it is K-O-M-O-D-O -O instead of K-I-M-O-D-O. -O. I think so. I, I didn't look that up before we started today, but I, th I think you're correct on that. Okay. Um, thank you all for joining us today. And I'm glad you could be with us again and uh, join us again next time when we'll do some more fun stuff. 
In the meantime, remember, curiosity is the cure for boredom. If you're feeling bored, find something to be curious about. Find something to say, hey, how does that work? Or I wonder how they do that or something like that. And then you'll get interested in something and your boredom is gone. There you go. Take so, it from him, the least bored guy I've ever met. <laughs> so I'm glad you could be with us today. I hope you learned, learned something and I hope you had fun. And I wish you a great day and we'll see you again next time. All right. Bye, everyone.